Well, for those of you following the Pitts rebuild, I thought I'd show you what I'm doing. I mentioned in the last video that I got some runs when I painted this fuselage white. And almost all of the runs were on the insides of these cabane struts here. So what I just did is I sanded off all of the runs and then scuffed everything up. And what I'm going to do next is just tape everything off because I'm going to repaint from basically the, the top of the fuselage here up. Nothing on the fuselage, just these struts. But so those are all sanded and scuffed. I just have to tape off the bottom, tape off the rest of the fuselage, and I will respray some white paint on there. Now since I'm going to be painting white, I thought I'd start getting out some parts that I need to paint. So this is the part that goes on the bottom of the firewall that covers up the, the sh shock cords. Then I have the throttle right here. And you can see I primed these quite a while ago. This is just a tube that goes in the back, I think between the stabilizers. And then I have this piece here. That is the piece that goes around the firewall. And what I've done with this one, it, you, you would just wouldn't believe how nasty this was before. I removed all of the nut plates. I sanded everything down, removed the old paint, and then uh, used my epoxy primer to prime that. So I have those parts there that uh, will, I'll repaint when I do the white. And then I also have behind there these two push rods. These are the ones that go between the upper and lower ailerons, so there's one on each side. And I just didn't like how the, the paint looked on here. And part of the reason why is because when I painted these, I just hung them up like this uh, from a hook from the ceiling. So when I was painting them, they were blowing all around and spinning and turning and <laughs> it was just, it wasn't a good way to hold them. So the paint was pretty uneven on it. So I, I sanded all that down and then I'll just shoot another coat of white on there. Then I'll show you what I'm doing with these two pieces. This is the inside of the turtle deck. So it's laying on here upside down right now. And the first thing I had to do with this was on the outside of it, this was completely covered with glue because the fabric gets glued to the skin. So I had to get some MEK and remove all of that glue that was still on the skin. Now, even though a lot of this will never be seen, I obviously want it to be as perfect as I can get it. So all of the corners I have rounded off, I've sanded, I've cleaned up with sandpaper. This inspection hole wasn't even deburred when they cut it out. So I'm sanding that nice and smooth so when you reach your hand in there, you don't scratch your hand or cut your hand. And those burrs obviously should be removed anyway. Then what I've done after I've cleaned up the entire edge and even on these uh, round pieces here on the back, these are kind of bent up because remember this is upside down when it goes on the airplane like that, this is the outside and it curves up this way. And that's just because the fabric will continue on to the back of the airplane from here. So it's nice that they curve this up uh, so there's not a sharp edge there on the, uh, the fabric. It kind of gives it a nice transition. But it was really wavy. I think what they did was they made a form block and just kind of pounded this with a hammer around. And so I used my little uh, edge forming tool to just kind of clean this up a little bit and smooth it out. And then again, I took my file and sandpaper all around there and fixed that. So this piece now is ready for primer. I won't do anything to the outside because the glue will spread on the outside. But on the inside here, I'm just gonna use some primer to uh, just help protect it from corrosion and stuff. And they have, I couldn't get it perfectly clean. Oops, I keep kicking this uh, firewall part down here. But there's some things on here you'll see like this. I don't know what that is. It's some kind of glue or something, but I can't get it off, which, which is okay. I'm just gonna prime right over it anyway. You can see it all along the, the edge there. Uh, again, it's the inside, it won't matter. Now this piece here, this is the inside of the turtle deck, kind of the baggage compartment in the pits. And I might have a picture I can put on the screen of before I started taking it apart, but they had uh, this little pouch riveted here for the, uh, the paperwork. Then they had uh, um, just a data plate and stuff right there. So I drilled out the rivets and removed those. If I don't have a picture, there was some Velcro spread around here for different things. I took that off. 
And my original plan was I was just going to get more aluminum and make, use this as a template and make a new one just because it was so nasty and dirty. But then I figured, yeah, I don't have to make a new one. It's fine. I'll just clean it up, sand it, and prime it and paint it. It'll look brand new. And that's what I did. It was really, really nasty back in here. So I've cleaned it all up. I haven't scuffed it up yet like I did with this. So I have to scuff this all up and then I'll put the epoxy primer and white paint on here too, so that when you open up that little baggage compartment, it'll look really nice in there. In fact, I even have, check this out, I have these graphics I made on my computer. So once, imagine this is all white and this is red here. So I'm gonna have that on the back wall of the, uh, the baggage compartment. While I was making that, I also finally made another end number to put on the panel, so that's done. But anyway, this piece right here, I wanted to show you this opening right here. Maybe if I put it up here, you can see it better. Uh, this is where the shoulder harnesses go back. And they, there's a tube that goes here. They go around the tube and down into like the bottom of the fuselage and they connect to the tubes. But this, this square hole they cut out, I'm not sure if I took a picture of it before I, I opened it up, but it was crooked in here and it was just rough cut. They didn't round the corners and they didn't even round these corners. Um, so the workmanship wasn't that great on it. But the other thing was, it was I always noticed it was rubbing on the, the shoulder straps. So the, the opening they cut in here was a little bit too small. So what I did was I, I opened up this opening and then made it a little bit wider, a little bit this way, made it so it's straight and even, and I'll show you how I did it. You can see that original cutout they had. I don't know if you could tell, but it was, it's crooked and very rough cut. So I drew a line straight across the top, even with the front edge, and then I just picked a, uh, a washer here that I thought would make a nice curve, and I traced the curve on both sides to make it a little bit wider of an opening so it doesn't rub on the straps. After I had the line drawn on there, I used my nibbler to cut as close as I could to the line all the way around. Empty hearts and neon lights The playing with my mind Gotta get out of here tonight Oh, I wanna run off, I am fly And I'll tell myself it's fine to be alone Just to find somewhere that finally feels like home Oh, oh, oh I hate all this old After all this, I think it looks 10 times better and now it won't rub on the straps. Now this corner of my hanger is most of the pit's parts, except the cowl. That is the cowling for the Super Duty. I've got my engine here and I really don't know what to do with this engine. I'm really not even sure what my options are. I don't know enough about engines, but this thing does have a slight oil leak in it. I think I might have mentioned this before, when I fly the pits and I bring it back and put it in the hangar, the next day or so I'll notice a couple drips on the floor um, of, of oil. So, and I don't want to put the engine back in the airplane just like that because that's part of the reason why that airplane was just so dirty and gritty and nasty on the inside, is it's just had how, how many years of an oil leak blowing in there and then some of the fuel fittings were leaking too. So fuel and oil and everything dripping inside the cockpit was just really a mess. And that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to rebuild this airplane. So I don't wanna put the engine in without doing something to it. There's only about 1200 hours on the engine if I remember correctly. Um, so I don't know what my options are. It, you know, the whole entire airframe is going to be brand new. I have my wings right here uh, and there's nothing wrong with the wings at all but I'm probably going to take the covering off and recover them and repaint them just because I want the wings to match the fuselage being brand new. So I don't want to put an old dirty engine back in a basically a brand new airplane. So I don't have the money for a new engine. I don't have the money to rebuild this one. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this engine yet. Now the fuel tank, if you can see it on the floor here, I don't know what to do with that either. It's really beat up. I don't know how I don't know what they did to this fuel tank, but it's just, there's so many little dents and stuff in it. 
and even where the strap, there's like kind of a little groove that's kind of into the tank where the, where the strap goes to hold it in there. And even that's kind of smashed in and so now the strap doesn't fit nicely in there. So I would like to get a brand new fuel tank, but they're about $900. So, and then of course I'd replace the header tank too. So we're looking at over $1,000 to put a new fuel tank in it. So I don't know what I'm going to do there. Either strip the paint off of this one and reuse it or just buy a new one. I don't really know. Uh, so anyway, that's all the, I'm just trying to think in my head now of all the other work that I have to do. I've got two wheel pants over there. Those wheel pants, I'll bet they weigh 10 pounds a piece. They're super heavy. They're really, really thick fiberglass and the fiberglass is cracking in some spots, which I can easily repair. But what I might do is just buy a brand new set of wheel pants and put the wheel pants on, uh, prime and paint the new wheel pants and put them on there. My prop is laying on the floor behind the camera. It's a fixed pitched metal prop and that is super heavy too. It probably weighs 45 pounds or something like that. And I think what I'll probably do is get the Sensnic uh, ground adjustable composite prop and take some weight off of the nose. So <laughs> just I'm sitting here thinking there's, you know, I kind of tore this airplane apart to rebuild it, not really thinking about what it's gonna cost me to rebuild. And it's gonna be quite expensive, especially the engine and a prop and fabric and paint. So who knows when it'll get done? You know, I'll do it little by little as I can afford to put some money into it. At the same time, I'm trying to finish up my Super Duty too. So I guess that's all I got for you on this update video. As I get the fuselage painted and some of the other parts uh, starting to get put back in the airplane, I'll make another update so you guys can follow along.